At the 2021, uh, there were a number of very interesting papers, but I'll tell you what I think were probably the most notable things. First of all, there were tremendous studies uh, from population-based approaches trying to determine the prevalence of MGUS and smoldering multiple myeloma. And uh, there was a very large randomized trial, 75,000 patients reported from Iceland, where essentially a very, very large fraction of the population was screened for this. And uh, so we're going to learn quite a bit more about the true incidence and uh, prevalence and then implications for follow-up for patients with multiple myeloma. Likewise, Dr. Irene Gobrell uh, talked about the PROMISE study, the initial report on the PROMISE study, looking at higher risk populations and showing, again, that there's a higher risk of, of uh, monoclonal gammopathies. One thing that the team from Dr. Gobrell, that Dr. Gobrell showed us is there's a significant fraction of patients who have uh, small, tiny uh, abnormalities, if you may, almost like pre -MGOS. I mean, there's no reason to believe this didn't exist. In fact, logic would predict that this is very common. I've, I've always said we probably all harbor a few abnormal plasma cells. And, and when one thinks about it, we've now known that when you have MGOS, you probably have had it for decades. And I would say, if there's such a thing like a pre MGOS, you probably have had it throughout your life. We're learning about this through this genetic archeology span that can trace back when things may have started. And again, why not? The greatest time in our life where we're exposed to antigens and in consequence, the greatest time in our life that our B cells are trying to form antibodies. When is it in, during childhood and early adulthood? So I tell my patients, I actually believe that the first cell that gives rise to myeloma could very well start when you're a baby. And it just takes a life uh, uh, duration for, for those cells to ultimately become malignant. Now that would be number one. The second one, which so, a large number of presentations with device-specific antibodies. And I'm putting them a little bit on top of the CAR T cells because we've seen quite a bit of data regarding the CAR T cells. But this is the first meeting where we're starting to see more of the efficacy of device specifics. So those will be off the shelf, easy to use, uh, T cell engaging uh, medication. So I'm very, very excited with that. And lastly, there were some other molecular studies that I think were, 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 were quite interesting, including one from Dr. Avedla. So, that shows the presence of high-risk uh, mini-clones right at the time of diagnosis that ultimately may prevail and become problematic down the line.